it used to be safe to protest on college campuses in the U.S. If you're calling out the Chinese Communist Party, you'd better be prepared. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. American colleges are repeatedly ranked as some of the best in the world, which is probably why the U.S. is a top destination for foreign students, especially students from China. Now, I would say it's generally a good thing that so many Chinese students are studying in the U.S. If you grow up in an authoritarian country like China that rewrites history and tries to cover up certain unsavory events while controlling the Internet, it's good to get out and see that there's another version of the story. Many Chinese international students have taken the opportunity to learn about things like the Cultural Revolution, or as I call it, the Cultural Devolution, the Great Leap Forward, or more accurately, the Great Leap Backwards, and the June 4th Tiananmen Square Massacre, where the government mowed down thousands of peaceful protesters. This is exactly why the Chinese Communist Party has done everything it can to keep Chinese students under tight control while they're abroad. One of the ways it does that is through Chinese Students and Scholars Associations, or CSSAs. The associations are supposedly there to provide help and services to its members, promote communication and dialogue between China and the U.S., and to present the culture of China to the community. Oh, and did I mention liaison with Chinese consulates? Yeah, you can't be accused of doing anything shady if they admit to that on their website, right? But CSSAs are really China's long arm that reaches into American campuses. They get funding from the Chinese government and do things like organize Chinese students to greet CCP leaders when they visit the U.S. For money, of course. Chinese patriotism seems to be at its highest when there are a few Maos in the picture. But all that pales in comparison to the spying the Chinese students and scholar associations do for the Chinese government. The student union at McMaster University in Canada shut down the school's CSSA after it openly said it contacted the Chinese consulate about a Uyghur activist who spoke on campus. The CSSA accused the Uyghur activists of attacking the Chinese government and promoting separatist activities. Which doesn't sound like CCP talking points at all. The CCP calls Uyghurs separatists and terrorists. And just in case there is any doubt that the CSSAs are an extension of the Chinese government, a new report about censorship of Falun Gong students on U.S. campuses makes that connection crystal clear. The report, which was done by the Falun Dafa Information Center, says that a student in Illinois was kicked out of a CSSA at the request of the Chinese embassy. The student said, I was told by the then CSSA president that the Chinese embassy in Chicago asked him to remove me from CSSA due to my involvement in Falun Gong activities. I had a personal website that published content about Falun Gong. I was later told that somehow the Chinese Consul of Chicago has noticed my connection with Falun Gong and asked the CSSA administration to remove me from CSSA. Well, at least that CSSA president gets points for honesty. Falun Gong is a spiritual practice that was pretty popular in China in the 90s which is exactly why the Communist Party leader at the time, Jiang Zemin, tried to wipe it out. The Communist Party doesn't like anything that's popular and spiritual that it can't control. And it's still the party's number one enemy to this day. For more on how Falun Gong became public enemy number one, check out this video we did. The link is below. Unfortunately, removal from the CSSA is not all that Chinese embassies do to intimidate students overseas. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. When China's new ambassador to the U.S. arrived last month, he raised eyebrows by saying in a letter to Chinese students that they should carry forward the tradition of loving our country and studying abroad to serve the motherland. Now, maybe if this were coming from a normal government, it wouldn't have set off so many alarm bells. But this came from the Chinese Communist Party. It tries to use all Chinese people everywhere to advance the goals of the party whether that's through spying, stealing trade secrets, or keeping its opposition silent. For example, the Chinese government has illegally opened underground police stations in several other countries to monitor Chinese citizens. Through their fox hunt 
and Skynet programs. The party tracks down dissidents overseas and tries to get them to return to China, either through coercion or force. And if those all fail, they use their embassies, United Front groups, and student associations to make sure Chinese people know that they're always within the party's reach. Especially when they're literally within the party's reach, like last year when this Hong Kong protester in the UK was attacked by Chinese consulate staff, including by the consulate general himself, and pulled into the consulate. By the way, this episode just got demonetized for showing that video. YouTube is trying to run us out of business for telling the truth about the Chinese Communist Party. You can help us fight back by contributing even a dollar an episode on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Link is below. And in case you think they overreacted and later regretted it, here's the now former consul general after the fact. I don't attack anybody. I'm the peacefully. Just that's, that's not true though, is it, consul general? You, you pulled the man's hair. Yeah, the man is because he's abused my country, my leader. I think he's a, it's my duty. To pull his hair? Yeah, I think it's a, any diplomats if a face to such kind of the behavior. Yes, it was his duty to pull the man's hair and drag him into the consulate. After all, he did put some pretty insulting posters of Xi Jinping up, and we all know how sensitive she is about his image. Not even cute, honey-loving bears are safe to compare him to, let alone the emperor who had no clothes. That's an image I don't want in my head. This kind of thing has created a culture of fear among Chinese students overseas, who even though they're in free countries where protests and dissent are allowed, still find themselves in China's crosshairs. I've spoken to a lot of Chinese students, let alone Tibetan students and Uyghur students um, and Hong Kong students. Even Chinese students who, used, who actually have less reason to fear the Chinese government, even they are terrified of taking part in any kind of activity that might be deemed as remotely critical or even borderline uh, critical to the Chinese government. And One non-Chinese Falun Gong practitioner told the Falun Dafa Information Center that Chinese Falun Gong practitioners at her school were afraid to come to Falun Gong events, fearing that their relatives in China may be endangered. This is a common tactic the party uses to silence Chinese when they go abroad. It's not that they won't go after the student directly, but it's easier to cover up the crime if they target someone in China. That's one thing for a student to risk their own life by protesting, but they may think twice if it's their families. One Falun Gong practitioner in Akron, Ohio, told Minghui.org, a clearinghouse for Falun Gong information, that whenever I say something about Falun Gong on the phone, my mom gets worried because all the international phones are tapped. Like I said, if you're Chinese, the party will make sure you know it's watching you and your family. Another report by the Falun Dafa Information Center says the Falun Gong were even more closely monitored during the pandemic because they were getting uncensored info about COVID out of China. Fearful of this exposure, Chinese security agencies have intensified surveillance and detention of adherents since early 2020. This trend continued in 2022 amid the CCP's draconian zero-COVID lockdowns. Unfortunately, I don't expect this to get any better anytime soon, at least not while the Communist Party is in power. These kind of things are only growing more common, and it's happening all over the world. Here's what happened to an Australian activist who held a sign in a public square criticizing Xi Jinping. Here he is again filming a Chinese student ripping down posters promoting democracy in Hong Kong. Here's what happened to another protester in Australia who wore a Winnie the Pooh costume on the street. So yeah, I can't blame these guys for showing up to a June 4th Tiananmen Square massacre vigil looking like this. Protesting against the CCP, no matter where you are, is no walk in the park. So what do you think should be done about this? Let us know in the comments below. And this show would not exist without support from viewers like you. As I said, YouTube frequently demonetizes, suppresses, and secretly unsubscribes people from this channel. Join what I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army by contributing to the show on Patreon. You'll get a bunch of cool perks, including the ability to ask me questions I'll answer on the show. Today's question comes from... Mr. House 111. 
Many activists' insider threats continue to work to undermine free speech. YouTube slash Google is number one in the West for this type of censorship. That's a very good point, Mr. House. For a long time, myself and some other major China YouTubers have believed that there could be Chinese troll accounts mass flagging our content which then triggers the algorithm to demonetize or age restrict our videos. That means less views. Less views means the algorithm doesn't let people know about new episodes because it's reading it as people don't want to watch our content, which means less views. And that's how the CCP can manipulate Western tech companies to silence criticism of the party. Thanks to a Twitter whistleblower, we know the CCP had its tendrils deep in the company before Musk took over. I can only wonder what's going on at Google, which is much bigger than Twitter. Fortunately, support from people like you, Mr. House, in the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army is what keeps this show going. Most of our budget comes from viewer support. Together, we are beating censorship and exposing the CCP. So thank you for your support. And thank you for watching. Again, that website is patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.